Let's Get Two presents Go, Go Astro! Go, Go Astros! A focus on H Town Hardball. One out, nobody on for Jose Altuve. 0 for 2 today. And 0 for 25 so far this postseason. Poke down the right field line, slicing, and a base hit for Altuve. Makes the turn at first on its way to second as it's fished out by Judge. And Jose Altuve breaks his postseason over with a double. And that's right. You just heard the what I think was the play of the game, Andy. Uh, Altuve breaking the schneid with a sharp double. Um, of all the things that happened yesterday, that's the thing that I liked the most. I mean, Chaz McCormick's mom may have a different opinion. I just, you know, what it, it was nice to, um, in many ways, that was the most solid performance we've seen out of this team all year against a team that is also good. Yeah, and I think you, I, I think that's a fair statement, but you can also still say that Altuve's double aside, he didn't do too much. Alvarez didn't do too much. Pena didn't do too much. Bregman didn't do too much. Tucker didn't do too much. And we still scored five runs. Yeah. Because James Click had the foresight to pull guys from the AL East just for this matchup. <laughs> I wonder if that's really what he was doing. Like, oh, okay. Um, it was – let's talk about Javier. Um, I, I know everybody on this show has been seeing that in him. We've seen that potential. We've seen it perform whenever he – it's got to be amazing, though, that he cannot pitch really like but once in 10 days and roll out and do that. Yeah, well, I mean, unless you're Nick Totoro, uh, which is a fantastic follow during the MLB playoffs, <laughs> um, I think a lot of baseball is sleeping on Kristen Javier, uh, which is kind of ridiculous because I think before um, – he's at, what, 18 – let me do math here – seven and six 13 innings of no hit ball or one hit ball against the Yankees in consecutively Yankee in Yankee stadium. And the, um, I mean, the funniest thing I saw was the, the Yankees somehow getting into the na 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 Hey, 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 goodbye. When Javier was taken out of the game after one hitting them for six innings, they did it to Hunter Brown too. After yeah. he, he giving got up no more. runs. When he, when he still gave up no runs, despite, um, despite, yeah, I mean, being the least sharp pitcher. And I still think even then putting him in has been, will pay dividends um, down the road for sure. Well, and I think he was um, right, wrong, or indifferent. And I don't love the home plate umpire's performance uh, really so far in the series, but especially last night. Um, I think he was getting squeezed more based on pitch track more than other pitchers were. Yes. Um, so, I mean, that helps when you are forced to throw strikes to get a strike call, and then the Yankees are, do have good hitters, despite what we've seen so far. They're going to they're gonna get base hits on that kind of stuff. The Well, yeah, especially, um, I think, I think because they gave up, he gave up the first walk, and it really should have been strike three a couple right. of times. Um, and still, I think, you know, again, I think having him in is going to pay dividends. Um but it was just nice to see the home run aside and, you know, it was a little league home run, right? Like, but it was nice to see hits being strung together, sacrifice flies. Like it, it came out as a team that seemed really determined to end that game as early as possible. You know, and my um, twisted mind, when I saw that home run, my thoughts immediately went, went to Chris Woodward and his family. Uh, I assume he is drinking a bucket full of Olympia or Natty Light or whatever you drink when you're on unemployment. Um, just cursing, just cursing the Little League stadium that the Yankees are forced to play in. Yeah, it's so funny to me uh, now that he's on unemployment and been replaced by a dinosaur who will immediately probably get that team to at least 500 next year. And Sure. Well, and... they're probably going to spend another quarter billion dollars this <laughs> offseason to try to shore up some other holes in their lineup. Probably, probably so. What else did you take um, from yesterday? I know one of the things that I saw that was interesting is I did watch Garrett Cole's pro, uh, post-game presser. I didn't find anything super obnoxious about it, yet it, I think we've gotten – Astros fans have gotten so mad at him since post-2019 that no matter what he says, it's wrong. It's hard to get um, you know too angry with an agent of himself because uh, he's only speaking for himself. He doesn't represent a team. 
ever just you know him and team boris i i don't have a problem with garrett cole uh i don't have a problem necessarily with anything garrett cole did on his way out of houston i don't have a problem with his signing with the yankees i have a problem with yankees media and national media making him out to be more than he is sure um because he was a 450 era level pitcher before the astros acquired him he had one really good season and one elite season and then went to the Yankees and has not been as good. He's still a great, great pitcher. I would still take him back on my team, but he's, you know, maybe a top 15 pitcher and not a top five pitcher. And we saw that yesterday. Uh, He has spurts of being very good. He struck out the side to open the game and the Yankees thought they had something cooking with that. And the Astros showed more patience, which I was super happy about, uh, against him than they have really any other starter the Yankees have thrown out, which uh, that's great because one of my concerns, um, and that was true with Seattle too, we were very much first pitch hacking on a lot of guys and we want to be aggressive and that's part of what we do offensively. But I think there are guys like Cole that you want to see, want to let him get through his pitches and figure out what he's not throwing as well and then start working on that. You can only do that if you see some pitches. Uh, everybody had a much more patient approach at the plate last night, I thought. Well, I think this applies as well tonight with and we'll obviously get tonight in a minute. But the other thing, too, is if there is a weak spot on the Yankees, it is the bullpen. And you don't get to the bullpen unless you get the pitch count up on Garrett Cole. Um, do you think that Aaron Boone took him out too early last night, knowing the bullpen is suspect? Um, I think you took him out too early if your answer is Lou Trevino. Um, because I don't understand that. I, Trevino is not good, a guy like three years ago. He was, but even then the Astros didn't have a lot of trouble hitting him. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, and I think we would all be intellectually dishonest if we didn't say that the A's certainly acquired Frankie Montas and Trevino in case they had to face the Astros for, because of familiarity and the success they've had with the A's. I think that's a thing. Just like I think picking up Christian Javier, or excuse me, um, Christian Vasquez from Boston, who's played a lot of games in Yankee Stadium, that that's on that's an on purpose move. Um, so the fact that they put Trevino in instead of some of their higher level higher leverage relievers at that point didn't make a lot of sense to me. And if you're going to put Trevino in, leave Cole in. Cole's yeah. got a much better chance of getting out of that with, with minimal least- damage. You know, yeah, because you, you got to figure you're at least giving up a run in that situation, but maybe not all three if you – and I don't understand that logic either. Obviously, it's not a Yankee show, but I do like – we we you know, you and I both have friends on the other side who I legitimately feel bad for them having to watch Aaron Boone's I mean, postseason. Do we? Because according to Yankees Twitter, they all killed themselves last night. <laughs> like all of them. They're all dead. I felt I, – I assume I'm going to have to fly to funerals. It's that bad. <laughs> I know, right? Pour one out. I, I I felt bad for Emily Nyman, our friend on the show, who was there. And yeah, I, she's got tickets tonight. I don't know if she's going to go. Well, hey, maybe she can plan pray for the rain. Yeah, pray for the rain exactly. But it it did seem like a weird give up move when theoretically, if you can hold them to to just one run there, hold us to one run, it's three to nothing. You at least feel like you're in the reach of the game, and that changes approach. It changes everything. Well, and I don't think – the two things aren't mutually exclusive, but the Yan- Astros pitching has been so good and the Yankees hitting has been so bad this series that a two-run lead probably felt insurmountable. Um, and I, well, I'm we've sure been it was there a, on the other side. When- 100%. Um, yeah. All of the 90s. 2005 <laughs> <laughs> World Series. Yes, all of that. Yeah. But um, that, that's – it just seemed like a really strange move that if Trevino is your answer instead of some of their better relievers, because as Brian has told us, they have three relievers they trust. I don't know that we've seen them this series. One of them um, warmed up. That was it. Yeah, so if you're holding them out to protect a lead, you better hurry up because um, there's not much daylight left in the series. Uh, it's, it's, it was a weird move. I'm super happy that it worked out for us. Uh, I'm super happy that, um, you know, actually I'm sad that Brian's not here because I'm sure he could tell us some very obscure stat about Trey Mancini facing Garrett Cole in Yankee Stadium at seven o'clock at night that would have made it all make sense. Um, But you just have us. 
Well, and you just have we, us. We, and we count on our fingers. Just like with Altuve, though, I thought we saw good signs. I think, you know, clearly he had the one fly ball that I think actually did get caught in the wind and might have been a home run. And then that sacrifice mm-hmm. fly was hit with intention. Um, to your point earlier in the show, if we've seen what that guy's capable of when he first got here, if that if he turns it on, all of a sudden it's a very long, dangerous lineup. Yeah, and that's with Mancini especially, and I I am fairly shameless about this. I don't know how public I, I'm. A hundred percent rooting for the guy. Beyond his story, he just seems su- like such a good, likable guy that you want him to do well. I'm sure that's part of why you know the fans in Baltimore loved him um, and still do. I'm sure that's why he's so popular around Major League Baseball. He got a, he got um, tears last night when he was announced in Yankee Stadium to hit. Like, yeah, that doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, unless you're a former Yankee. And even then it's, you know, iffy. So, and, you know, the boo birds were certainly out for him to get a little bit of applause from that crowd uh, was a big deal. So I was really happy for him that he could feel like he was a contributing part of the lineup. Um, even with an 0 for 2, it was an 0 for 2, one, nearly a home run, like you mentioned, and two, gave us the insurance run that we need. And then um, Vasquez after that with a bigger hit. All of a sudden, clicks looking like a genius with uh, with those two pickups. One last thing on Yankee fans, because it's so interesting to watch that again, because I think we have some, some folks that we like that are part of that. But it was hilarious to me to see the guy in Yankee Stadium trying to quiet the booze as if they believe the booze actually do power Jose Altuve. Did you notice that at the beginning of the game? I, I did, and I thought that was hilarious, and I don't want to, you know, Diss on that guy because I I'm the same guy who won't wear this this whole ensemble will come off before the game starts tonight. I will be in neutral color clothes, sitting <laughs> in the same spot on the couch. Yeah, depending on how it starts, I may be watching TV. I may be watching on my phone. It, it, it there's a lot of things that you know I personally can do to help the Astros win, and I'm not always good about it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Jessica's kind of freaking out because she doesn't have a game four shirt yet. And so she doesn't know, does she wear what she wore for game three last night? Cause it was also what she wore when you game three against Seattle with the clinch. Do you I mean you have a, do you, can you chime in on that? She has no game four shirt. Um, well, I mean, that's a failure on your part because I think you could go an 18 game series and still have a unique outfit every, every, every game. I, I could. <laughs> Um, you know, I think this is the time where she needs to raid your closet and see what there is that she <laughs> could um, pull from pull from that wardrobe and uh, really mix it up. Uh, <laughs> the the beauty of being up three zero in a seven game series is you've got some you got a minute to experiment. Well, and that's the that's what I wanted to get to next because I want to get to the game obviously, but up three zero, you uh, there's so many ways that this thing can go, and obviously the vast vast majority of them are positive. You play them close tonight, even if you don't win, make them use that leverage bullpen. And then tomorrow against Verlander, I don't, it, it doesn't come up with a lot. But um, tonight, Nestor Cortez, he's been very good this year, um, mm-hmm. but he hasn't necessarily been very good his whole career. How do you see it, our lineup versus those guys tonight? I mean, I think it's going to be more of the same. Um, it, we're going to throw out a high quality pitcher that arguably could be the ACE level pitcher on a lot of uh, major league baseball franchises in 2022. Uh, He's a guy that's only had, I guess now 10 starts, nine starts because he's been injured um, since the last playoffs uh, and took a long time to come back mid season. And I think the Astros did it the right way. One of the benefits of having just a wealth of starting pitching is that you could nurse him along maybe better than some other franchises could afford to do. Um, So I think Lance McCullers Jr. going out with playoff experience is going to prevent a big challenge for especially a team that is geared to hit fastballs and he's going to throw just a mess of breaking stuff, you would assume. Um, I think he's geared to – They said on the broadcast he's one of the few pitchers who actually throws the majority of breaking stuff, not his fastball, really all that often. Yeah. And I think that matches up well with the Yankees team that we've seen this series who probably needs a healthy diet of fastballs to get going. They're not going to see that tonight unless we get into the bullpen. Um, I, it'll be interesting to see what Aaron Boone does. Uh, you know, if the game gets played, because there is still rain in the forecast, it doesn't look like it's a lot. It's just going to be steady. 
And then, you know, it, but I don't think there's thunderstorms or those kind of things. I think all told the whole storm was maybe a third of an inch of rain, you know, yeah. but in Houston, that could be all at once that rings up. The game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, um, exactly. So, you know, assuming we play the game tonight, you got McCullers going. Um, that's good for the Astros. Uh, we really need production from the front end of our lineup more than we've gotten this series. I think the Yankees have done a very good job of holding our top five hitters down um, with a couple of exceptions. But, the, you know, Pena has had a good series um, so far. Had Bregman's, had a good, Bregman's had a good series, but um, they've been fairly quiet outside of, you know, Bregman's home run in game two. Um You'd really like to see Alvarez start to um, get get a pitch to hit, frankly. <laughs> I want to see Altuve continue to build on yesterday. Uh, you maybe, maybe two hits instead of one. Um, but I, it, it's interesting because there's no pressure on Houston to finish this up today. There's no. all the pressure in the world for the Yankees because they have to – if they want to play tomorrow, they have to win today. And that's going to be true if – I mean, for any of the games we play – you brought up uh, strikeouts, and this was a stat that I thought was very, very interesting. Um, uh, MLB put it out. There are four teams still alive in the playoffs. The Yankees have struck out 30 times in three games. The Phillies have struck out 29 in four games. The Padres, 29 in four games. And in three games, the Astros have struck out eight times. That is it. Yep. Times. Yeah, I mean, it's a... It- it is the difference between having an approach and not having an approach. And I think the Astros, whatever you want to say about them, whatever fans around the country want to believe about them, the Astros are extremely well coached. And that's not the dusty conversation. That is Snickter. That is our pitching coaches, our, our analytics team. Pitch, the whole, I mean, everybody from the um, Rocamonte out in the bullpen, um, all the way through the, the organization. They get their teams, their players prepared, I think, as well as any other baseball team in Major League Baseball, maybe better. And maybe that's why they're there and that's why they're performing the way they are. And I will I'll be on. I actually did have it incorrect. That was before game started yesterday. So it was three games, three games, and then two for ours. But still, it's a, a vast disparity in strikeouts yep. compared to what we're doing. Um, totally. The other thing, the other fun stat is this will be the sixth time already in Lance McCullers' career where he has started a game that can clinch and he has won five of them. How about that, yep. Brian? Where are you at? Now, Brian figures he starts out himself. I'm ripping off other people's Twitter. So it's like, I really feel like he's going to just burst in here at any moment and go, Well, exactly, actually, <laughs> is he like the Kool Aid man of stats? Yes. Just a big number flying through the wall. Uh, um, yeah, so, I mean, I don't know what to do with this as an Astros fan, to be real honest with you, because everything is lined up really, really well for Houston. If we don't win today, you've got Justin Verlander going tomorrow. Justin Verlander beats the Yankees. That's what he does. That's part of the reason we acquired him in 2017, was to beat the Yankees. Um, and it's worked out you know, pretty well for us. So, I don't know what to do with this sense of, I don't know what it's called where I'm not dreading everything that's about to happen. Optimism. I mean, look, I definitely am sitting here going, well, the, the rug could still get pulled. I mean, and look, it can, it's possible. Nothing's over. It ain't over till it's over. Um, right. I did see another interesting Yankee versus Astro stat that we'll probably talk about in the off season, but it was breaking down the uh, the Astros front office versus the Yankees front office. And the most recent hire in the Yankees front office was made in 07. Our most recent hire was made in 2022. And it does kind of point out, I think, that they're not as fresh a thinking team as what the Astros are. And maybe they do need to change some things up. Well, I think you put it best in um, our other show, let uh, you fight Suey. Uh, Teams, franchises that are very, very successful run into a danger of, I think you said, eating your own cheese, and we amended that to smelling your own farts. Um, And I think that when you are a team like the Yankees, whose um, last big, huge glory days were in that mid to late 2000s, 2000, the aughts, that decade, 
you have a lot of success to build on, but you want to stay kind of insular and not necessarily reach out your comfort zone. And so even those guys that are in the organization who have been there for 15 years now, 16, 17 years in some cases, they came from within the organization too. So it's not like they were going outside to progressive organizations to find the best ideas. Uh, I think one of the things that thread that you're talking about made a really good point of, even if our hires hadn't been recent, we went out and got a GM and an assistant GM from Tampa Bay, who is a uh, high driving analytics team. And our other assistant general managers from the Dodgers. Um, we have a scouting um, director from Milwaukee, whose her name escapes me right at the moment, but uh, all of these organizations that we've went and uh, acquired our front office personnel from um, come from organizations that not only um, do really, really good analytic work, but augment the things that the Astros were already doing. So it's not like we had to start from scratch with a whole new philosophy of how we were going to build not just a major league baseball team, but four levels of minor leagues and development and drafting and scouting and all that. And I think, when the BBs are all in the all in the box, um, another to, quote yeah. often used on Yell Fight Suey. Um, it, 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 people should watch; they would know what I'm talking about. Uh, We're doing very is, well, by the way, considering how how that went yesterday for both of us. But yeah, um, I don't even want to go there. <laughs> uh, but I think that's again to the point of you go out and acquire great people from organizations that are doing smart things, and you're just going to get better. That's true in the corporate world. That's true in um, any of your entrepreneurial ventures. Uh, new, fresh ideas, new eyes, new ways of looking things are ultimately always going to be better than we traditionally do this and we hire this type of person and we think this way and that's the way we're going to do it because we've won 27 rings. Well, to quote great uh, CEO uh, Tommy Callahan Sr., um, you're either growing or you're dying. There ain't no third direction. Um, that's right. It's a Tommy Boy <laughs> reference for you this morning. Couple more points before we get out of here. Um, I want to go back to you and I on Let's Get To. I think Scott was with us. We did an entire hour long episode immediately after the sign ceiling thing was revealed. And one of the things that I think all of us agreed on is that the media was going to make us the villain to sell clicks, yep. and then at some point they would make us the 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 comeback story. You're already seeing that. Uh, any thoughts as a fan when you when now you're reading that, like Jeff Passan talks about how you, you can even just ignore 2017 because this team is built to beat the Yankees and will continue to do so. Are you are you glad to see it? Or are you like you didn't like us then? Don't like us now? Uh, I'm probably more towards the second because they they say whatever they need to say to get clicks on their articles. It's not about journalistic integrity because if it was, there would have been a different narrative in 2019 when all this came out um, and then into 2020. Uh, I, I don't have anything against Jeff Passan. I don't have anything against Buster Olney, but they seem completely divorced from the idea that they're the ones who push the narrative about the Astros being the most evil team in the history of baseball and oh my God, how horrible. And my pearls are completely clutched because the integrity of the game that, you know, kept black people out of the sport for the first hundred years and um, still doesn't really like Hispanic or Latin players, even though that's more, most of the players, uh, all the, all the integrity was so important to baseball. Um, but they push that narrative and they push that narrative because if there was a good period of time where if you put Astros cheating in an article, you were going to get a lot of clicks because there was a lot of vitriol around that subject, rightfully so. Um, but then they proceeded to deny that they had anything to do with it. And that's where my issue is because now it's like they've glossed over their involvement at all. The media is the one who drove the narrative because, believe me, Rob Manfred wanted this whole thing to die. Yeah, he totally. wanted to throw the he wanted to throw the punishment out, and there was a punishment because losing draft picks when you don't have the Dodgers payroll is a big deal. Um, whether or not you believe five million dollars really bothers Jim Crane, that is a penalty, and that was the max you could charge to a, a franchise. Um, and we lost our GM and our and our manager. And whether or not that was part of the official punishment, it certainly was one of the aftermath pieces. So all that to be said, I don't care what Jeff Besson or Buster Olney or Bob Costas has to say about my franchise at this point, because 
they haven't looked at it objectively for five years. Well, and Costas hasn't looked at it objectively for however long since 1960, whatever, when the Astrodome opened. <laughs> well, it, it, for Bob Costas, if it's not the Yankees and the Cardinals, why are we bothering to play? <laughs> true. Yeah, true. All right. So tonight, uh, Astros versus um, the Yankees. Uh, Nasty Nestor is up. Do you think the series goes to game five tomorrow? Um. I think the Yankees are a very good team still, the, despite the fact that we're up 3-0. These have been two – two of the three have been very close games, and you could argue yesterday's game could have been closer than it was. Um, I, I still want to believe they have some fight left in them, but human nature being what it is, you are down 3-0. There's only been one team in the history of baseball that's come back from a 3-0 deficit to win a seven-game series. And it wasn't the Yankees. Um, and I like mentioning that because it wasn't the Yankees. We, we suggest checking out the movie Fever Pitch if you want to see a dramatization of it. I mean, and also if you want to see a, a real good rewrite mid-script um, or mid-filming yeah. because some things changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but anyway, it, it, history, is not, history is against them and human nature is if, – if the Astros get out to an early lead, I think it's over. Um if it goes scoreless for a pretty long time into the game or the Yankees get up early, they've got a chance to win tonight. But tomorrow we've got Verlander going and they're back to um, that guy that opened, that played game one, Talion or whatever, however he pronounces it. Um, And and it it goes back to advantage Astros. And frankly, pitching wise, it's been advantage Astros this entire series. I don't expect that to change pitching wins playoff games. I think that's where we are. Um, that said, if we do lose tonight, I, I'm not going to lose a whole lot of sleep over it. Yeah. Um, last question. And, and I, I really am not trying to rebut Brian when he's not here. But it's fun, isn't it? It's kind of fun. But Brian <laughs> always talks about momentum in baseball it doesn't really exist. And I, I definitely understand the concept of that. However, can negative momentum exist? Like if you if you feel like you've already lost a series, how are you supposed to get it back up? And oh, and hold on do my best here <laughs> losing is a disease as contagious as syphilis as dangerous as cholera wow that was pretty good okay i've been working on that um yeah i think absolutely there's negative momentum that uh, can it, there, there is certainly a pallor over the Yankees right now because nothing has gone right for them, and they are grasping. I mean, you can see it in Aaron Boone's interviews. He doesn't have answers right now for what's happening, other than, "Hey, the Astros are a good team, and we're not, hit, we're not hitting." It's true. I hope there's some more going on in the background or in his head about that. Um, but they, they, I mean, to a man on that team, they seem really surprised that they're not hitting. Which is weird to me because they haven't exactly played well since the All Star break. Yeah, they were five hundred team since the All Star, yeah. like like exactly, and, and that's with getting pretty hot the last two weeks of the season to clinch yeah. their division. Yeah, like they won what almost they won ten straight at one point to end the series the season. Okay, yeah, but it was like they were nineteen and thirty one prior to that. I mean, it yeah. was it wasn't great. Um, so it, it's I, I think it's going to be a really big hill to climb. Again, if anything goes wrong for the Yankees early, I think it's syphilis. Okay. Last two questions, and I promise. And then you can get back to your Sunday brunch, whatever it is that you guys do over there. Um, okay. Does the NLCS go back to San Diego, or are we finishing in Philly? I sure hope it goes back to San Diego. I hope you Darvish pitches a no-hitter tonight, and somehow it goes 18 innings, and then they have to fly to San Diego, and then those games go 15, 16, 20 innings, and they have to use all their bullpen guys, and they get rained out at least one game somehow in San Diego, <laughs> and they lose the off day of to travel, and then they have to show up in Houston really, really tired. Whoever it is, I don't really care. Don't really care. Does this series come back to Houston? Um, I don't think so. All right. Well, this is I'm, go- st- I'm sticking with I'm sticking with my uh, five games, so I don't see any reason to change that. I hope I'm wrong, and it's four zero, but I- I'm sticking to five. Um, I do I do as you as we've talked about offline, think that there's a little bit more life in that NLCS, and that the, you know there's probably going to be at least a game six, um, 
if not a game seven. So, and I'm rooting for whoever comes in uh, and we'll talk about the curse of the NL East with the Astros in the world series um, on a future game. If we reach that level. Uh, But yeah, it's been an entertaining series. Um, Phillies fans are really into it. The Phillies team is really hot right now. San Diego has some holes that they've exploited, um, but I'm hoping that they survive another night and, um, you know, get deep into their bullpens. And, you know, shout out to our friend and uh, let's get to contributor Paul Caputo, who has been a long suffering Phillies fan who is, trust me, you think we're cautiously optimistic. This dude doesn't even want to talk about it. So uh, it's been pretty funny. Well, I mean, we've talked about it on the show a little bit, but Phillies fans, um, if there's somebody that you can really relate to, they've been, they've been in existence 70 years longer than the Astros franchise, and they've won one more World Series than we have. Yeah. And their first one wasn't until 1980, whatever, one or 80 or 81, whenever they beat the Astros to get to um, – so there's some history there. For, yeah, we for can look forward fans. to a lot of flashbacks on that if that's the matchup. All right, Andy, we will be, uh, you know, programming note, we are going to do an episode if we are lucky enough to win a another game in this series. Uh, we I, hope Christian, do... I, I hope Christian Javier's or Christian Vasquez is making that face at some point tonight. I hope so, too. All right, man, we'll talk to you soon. Go Strohs. Go Strohs. Um, enjoy your Sunday. All right, man. I might...